quick revision video on inorganic qualitative analysis. So we'll start with the anions. So we've got five anions we need to know the tests for. So I'm going to run through the chemical tests and the expected observation. So starting with carbonate, you would add dilute nitric acid and you'd expect to see effervescence due to the production of carbon dioxide gas. So sulfate next, add aqueous barium ion, so for example barium nitrate solution, and you'd expect to see a white precipitate of barium sulfate. So move on to the halides now, we'll start with chloride. First thing you do is add aqueous silver ions in the form of silver nitrate solution, and then you would add dilute aqueous ammonia. So you'd expect to see from the first part a white precipitate of silver chloride, and that would dissolve in dilute aqueous ammonia. Bromide, very similar test, but one slight difference. So the first thing's the same, you'd add aqueous silver ions again, but then you would add concentrated aqueous ammonia. So you'd expect to see a cream precipitate of silver bromide now, and that would dissolve in the concentrated ammonia. It doesn't dissolve in dilute. And finally, iodide, so add aqueous silver ions and add concentrated aqueous ammonia. So you'd expect to see a yellow precipitate of silver iodide, but that's insoluble in concentrated aqueous ammonia. Now there's a correct order for these anion tests. So the order is carbonate first, then sulfate, then halide. So cash is a good way to remember the order. And that's because barium carbonate and silver sulfate are both insoluble. So they're going to give precipitates and could give a misleading result. I'll give you a couple of examples now. So suppose you had carbonate ions in your test tube, but you did the sulfate test first. So you would add barium ions to your test tube. Now barium ions can react with carbonate ions and give a precipitate of barium carbonate. So if you're carrying out a sulfate test and you get a precipitate, you're going to think that you've got sulfate ions in there, whereas you haven't, you've got carbonate ions in there. And likewise, if you had sulfate ions in your test tube and you carried out a halide test, then the silver ions that you're using in the halide test can react with the sulfate ions and give you a precipitate of silver sulfate. Whereas normally when you add silver ions to a test tube of an unknown substance and get a precipitate, you're going to think you've got some kind of halide in there. So to avoid that, you carry out the tests in the cash order. So carbonate first. If that doesn't give a response, you move on to the sulfate. And then if that doesn't give a response, you move on to the halide. So move on to cations now, so positively charged ions, same thing again, chemical test and the expected observations. So we'll start with the ammonium ion, first thing you would do is add dilute sodium hydroxide, you'd warm that up and then you test any gas produced with damp red litmus paper. And the expected observation is the damp red litmus paper should turn blue from the production of ammonia gas. Copper 2 plus ions now. So you add dilute sodium hydroxide until in excess. So you add a small amount first and then add a lot more. So you'd expect to see your blue solution of aqueous copper 2 plus ions give a blue precipitate of copper 2 hydroxide. And that doesn't dissolve in excess. So if we move on to iron 2 plus now, so again add dilute sodium hydroxide until in excess. So this time we've got a green solution to start with, with the Fe2 plus aqueous ions in. That's going to give us a green precipitate of iron 2 hydroxide. And if you allow that to stand in air, it starts to turn brown. And that's because the iron 2 ions are turning into iron 3 ions, have been oxidised. But again, insoluble in excess sodium hydroxide, so the precipitate doesn't dissolve. Iron 3 plus, exactly the same test. This time we've got a yellow solution and that reacts to give an orangey brown precipitate of iron 3 hydroxide and again insoluble in excess sodium hydroxide.
manganese 2 plus, same test. So this time we've got a very pale pink solution and that reacts to give a light brown precipitate of manganese 2 hydroxide and that darkens on standing in air but it's also insoluble in excess sodium hydroxide. And finally chromium 3 plus, same test. So we've got a violet solution and that reacts to give a grey green precipitate of chromium 3 hydroxide but this time there is a change when you add excess sodium hydroxide we get a dark green solution.